Hi guys, it's Trina and this is my monthly recommendations topic for the month of April. Monthly recommendations is a Goodreads group created by myself and Kayla Rain where we give you guys a topic every month and then the entire book community is welcome to join in and recommend books that fit that topic. As always, there will be a link to the group and to Kayla Rain's channel in the description. April's topic is big books or books that are more than 500 pages long. I have 10 books that I'm recommending today that have more than 500 pages in them. I've got five adult books in series and then I've got five young adult books in series and when I recommended series I had like the guideline for myself that every book in the series had to have been over 500 pages. First up I want to recommend an adult series to you and that is the Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. I know a lot of people know about these books, they're somewhat interested in them but a lot of people are put off because of the length but I read the entire series, all five books that are currently out in 2015. I read them in just about like nine or ten months and I did that because I listened to the audiobooks, which I did enjoy. I talked about the audiobooks of this series in my recent video about all my all-time favorite audiobooks, so I just want to say that if you are intimidated and put off of it to buy the length of it, but you feel like you would enjoy a high fantasy series, the audiobooks are a definitely a good option to help you kind of move through it more quickly. Next, I want to talk about two Stephen King books that are over 500 pages that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed Under the Dome, which is an adult sci-fi novel. It is about this small town that they just like wake up one day and there's this invisible barrier all around their town and nobody can come in, nobody can get out. The town that is stuck inside of this dome is running out of food and supplies and there's like all this corruption about the politics in that town that comes to light because everyone's kind of caged in together and they're just trying to figure out like why is this here and can they get out. Stephen King is a horror writer but I don't think that this book is too scary or anything. Like it's got a couple of moments that are like what is happening here I don't know that'll maybe like make you uneasy because it deals with some like darker themes sometimes but I did enjoy it and I think it's a good starting place for like horror if you're you're not into like the hardcore scary stuff. I also really enjoyed his book 112263 which is about a school teacher who finds a doorway into the past and he decides it is his job in life to go back and stop the JFK assassination. I just really enjoyed the way that this one played with time travel like the mechanics of how that one doorway into the past worked and then what our character had to go through to get where he wanted to go and all the different times that he had to try this. It's a very long book but I really enjoyed it and definitely recommend it. The next book I want to recommend is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This one is about a young girl who is found dead and police and everybody, her family, is like it was a suicide but we follow an investigative journalist who is like, ah, uh, there's some weird stuff that's been going on with her family and I don't really believe that this was a suicide so he starts looking more into it and just uncovering these really weird facts about her family. And I really enjoyed this book because it kind of leads you to think that something paranormal is happening, but it also leads you to think that maybe you're just imagining that, maybe the characters are just imagining that. So it's one of those weird books where you don't really know what's happening and you're just trying to figure it out, but I really enjoyed this book a lot. I would definitely recommend it if you like mysteries or thrillers. The last adult novel I want to recommend is for readers who don't like, like high fantasy and you also don't like horror or scary stories. It's The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I know this has been out for a long time. A lot of people have already read it or you already know of it. This is an adult sci-fi novel about when the world has been taken over by aliens and they like use human bodies as hosts and they just like live in your body and you kind of like your consciousness disappears and we are following a character who is human and she's having one of these aliens put inside of her but her consciousness doesn't disappear and she actually still regains some control over her body so it's kind of like her and this alien trying to get along and figure out what to do. I would recommend this one to readers who like a bit of romance, who like survival stories, who like stories about aliens and I really enjoyed the alien side of this one because these were such unusual aliens and this alien character that's in the main person that we follow, like just her thoughts about humanity were something that I really found very fascinating. As for the YA books that I would recommend, I would recommend the Inheritance Cycle series by Christopher Paolini. There are four books in the series. It's basically like a hero's quest type of fantasy story. It's about a young boy that finds a dragon egg. There's like elves and dwarves and different types of fantasy creatures. There's like rebellions and alliances and dragons which are really cool. I love the dragons in this series. All the books in this series are over 500 pages and again this is a series that I really enjoyed the audiobooks for if you are intimidated by their length. Another YA book that I would 
recommend for fantasy readers is a fantasy standalone. It is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. You do not need to have read her book Fangirl in order to understand or read Carry On. This one is set in a wizarding school and because of that a lot of people say it feels a lot like Harry Potter, but I didn't find that this one was hard to read or hard to get into. I didn't compare it to Harry Potter a lot while I was reading it. I definitely saw it as its own thing, but this one is basically a romance story between Simon and his roommate Baz and these two boys they like have this a lot of antagonism they don't get along they both think each other is really like, really out to get them because Simon is like the guy who everyone thinks is gonna be the hero Bass is the guy that everyone thinks is gonna be the villain I really enjoyed the relationship in this book I really enjoyed the characters in this book you know the world building and stuff leaves a little bit to be desired but I think it's a really fun fantasy that reads pretty quickly and it is over 500 pages so if you're looking for a longer tome to get through quickly this one might fit that for you next I would recommend the Diviner series by Libba Bray. So far there are two books out in this series and this is a paranormal series about these different characters that have supernatural powers and the first book is about a series of murders that is happening in the 1920s in New York. There's like a big stigma around the people that have these powers so like a group of different ones kind of band together to solve this mystery and it's just a pretty big world, a big story going on here. There's a lot of different elements to it but I would call this one paranormal. There's like demons and ghosts and there are some really creepy moments in it but I don't think it's anything too scary but if you like paranormal YA books I would definitely recommend this series. Again if you are intimidated by the length of these books I highly recommend the audiobooks. They are some of my favorites of all time that also made my favorite audiobooks video. Next I recommend the Illuminae series by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. The first book is Illuminae and the second book is Gemina. This is a sci-fi series that is following an attack on a planet. Like this planet was completely destroyed and all the survivors that managed to get off of the planet are stuck on board these different spaceships and stuff just keeps going wrong. There are people that are coming after the ships in order to like finish the job and kill everyone that was from that planet. Then there's like an illness that breaks out on one of the ships. One of the computer systems goes rogue and starts trying to kill people within the other ships. Both of these books are over 500 pages but they are super quick reads. Like you can read these in just a few sittings because I feel like the story is so gripping and there's a lot of formatting in these books too. So some of the pages look like this or like this. This series is just a really, really fun ride. I know they're extremely popular, but if you have not read them yet, I definitely recommend them. The last book that I want to recommend today is actually a graphic novel. It is Blankets by Craig Thompson. This is one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. So this one is a true graphic novel. It is just one installment. That's it. It's not a comic series that has different issues and different volumes. You can just pick up this one book and you'll have the entire story. It is over 500 pages, so it is very long, but because it is illustrated, it reads very quickly and this one is a YA contemporary story about the author's like it's his memoir of growing up and coming of age and his first love and I personally feel like Blankets is a very great starting place if you're just starting to get into graphic novels or comics because this one has such a full story arc like it's a long book so you're getting a lot of story and I feel like a lot of people struggle with comics or graphic novels because they're so short and you're like oh that story didn't feel very developed this one is extremely developed and it reads a lot like just your typical text contemporary book but it just has the illustrations with it so if you're used to reading YA contemporaries and you want to make that jump into graphic novels or comics I definitely think Blankets is a great place to start. So those are some of my favorite books that are over 500 pages and I would love to hear your recommendations. What is a big book that you would recommend to me? If you know of any that you feel like really suit my reading taste please let me know that down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!